One of Android 11's amazing features is very customizable out of the box, but I'm gonna show you how to open that even wider next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So last week we dove into Android 11. That's right. Android 11 is starting to roll out to some devices. And if it's not rolling out to your device, chances are your device has some sort of an open beta access like some OnePlus devices do. Anyways, Android 11 is out there. And unfortunately, it's not on as many devices as it really should be out of the gate. That's always the case with Android. But one of my favorite features in this new version is this. It's the power menu. And the power menu just has so many cool features and some customization options built into it. But I wanted to take it a little bit of a step further and not just accept that what we're given in the power menu is good enough because we can do more. And that's what I'm going to show you uh, how to do today using a very popular app called Tasker. We're going to get to that in a second. But first, let's take a look at the power menu, the new refreshed power menu, and see what it offers out of the box. So before we get into customization of the power menu, um, let's take a look at what it offers to Android 11 users right now. If you hold down the power button on your Android 11 device, you'll pull it up and you'll see three separate sections in this redesigned power menu. Up top are of course the traditional power controls. So power off and restart. Here I have them embedded in a single button. Uh, there's also emergency, of course, this is a way to kind of summon a call to emergency services if you need it. You can also click through to show emergency contact information, medical details if you plugged all, that, all of that in. And you can do that by editing the details in the personal safety settings. Uh, there's a link here that'll take you right there to do that. And then you also see lockdown. This is an option that you have to activate in settings in order for it to appear here. Obviously, I've done that. And basically what it does is it deactivates biometric methods on your device, uh, which requires a PIN or a password for access to your device. Uh, now, the middle section, of course, is linked to Google Pay. Any cards that you happen to have linked to your Google account and Google Pay account will appear here. Just kind of makes it easy to swipe between cards for contactless purchases. And then, of course, the bottom section. This is where we're going to be focusing our attention today. This is the device control section, and it ties directly into Google's Home app. And you can see here, this is my home app. In, in my home app, I have a ton of smart home lights, switches, Google Homes, a smart thermostat, all linked up and organized into the various rooms of my home. The problem is there's so much stuff here that sometimes it can be, I don't know, a bit overwhelming depending on the task that I have in that moment. So enter the new power menu. Uh, this device control section actually acts as a mini repository of my absolute favorite smart home actions. And I've edited it a little bit, so you aren't actually seeing my favorites here. I'm kind of showing you the gamut. I can turn on my smart lights, dim them. Um, I can adjust the volume of my Google Homes if I happen to have something playing, adjust my thermostat. More or less, if a device is linked into my home app, I can add it as a control in the Android 11 power menu for quick access. So then, wouldn't it be nice to have the ability to do more with this section of the power menu, right? Like turning on a light is one thing, but what if you wanna do something even further than that? Say I wanna create a single button that triggers a series of actions, or if I want a particular light to come on and I also want it to switch to a certain color mode, something unique. Um, these are just a couple of ideas you can use your imagination. The home app has something called routines in it uh, that can be set up to do things kind of like this, but that doesn't make its way into the power menu, the new power menu, at least not yet. Maybe Google will add it eventually. So in order to do this, we turn to a classic and I mean that, this is a classic Android app that you've probably heard of called Tasker. Tasker is a device automation app 
uh, that has been around nearly as long as Android has. It's an incredibly powerful app, often incredibly confusing as well. Uh, it creates automation of pretty much anything you want on your device, and it's possible to link outside of your device as well uh, with the integrations that kind of reach outside and in this case into your smart home. So here's what I want to do here for this demonstration. I want to add a button to the device control power menu uh, that turns on my Hue studio lights. I have studio lights in here, uh, right over here, in fact, that are, it, are driven by a Hue bulb. And I want the color temperature of my Hue bulb to match my large studio light that's on the right uh, side of me. The power button menu lets me do uh, turn on those Hue lights as it is but it doesn't let me make any sort of control over things like changing the color, that sort of thing, the color temperature. I want that all in a single button press in this menu. So that's my goal. That's what I'm going to work towards. So first, of course, if you don't have it installed already, you want to install Tasker. Um, but <laughs> stop right there. We aren't going to do it through the Play Store. I'm going to show you why. The developer actually released a beta version of Tasker and is offering it direct for now. Now this update is likely going to hit the Play Store soon, but for now and the, at the point of recording this episode, if you want to try this, you have to download direct from the developer. So you'll do a search for the Reddit post that I'm linking to here. The title is going away for a month, but before I do, here's a gift. In that post, the developer of Tasker, Zhao Diaz, includes a link to his Drive account to download this early beta version of Tasker. Now, personally, I trust the developer of Tasker here. Uh, you might not. That's entirely your call. Only do this if you personally can trust this developer. For, for me, Tasker's been around long enough. I think, I, I think it's all right for me, but you make that decision on your own. So I'm going to download that file to my device and install this updated version of Tasker from that link. I'm also gonna download an app in order to do this called Hue Essentials, which enables Tasker automation of my Hue bulbs. Uh, it does require a purchase of the premium app, that's $5.49, which I've paid, uh, but that gives me the access to this app within Tasker. Now, I've already synced the Hue Essentials app to my Hue Hub downstairs, so it's gonna work seamlessly with the app for this demonstration. All right, so first I'm gonna open up Tasker. And by the way, Tasker taps into all aspects of the device. So you might get prompted at times for permissions to access these parts of your device. Uh, Tasker is an app, like, like I said, that I trust with these permissions, but again, decide for yourself on this. Just know that certain things aren't possible without that kind of access. Okay, Tasker is a bit confusing, but for this project, all I really need resides in the tasks tab. This is where I create the flow of tasks that will take place when a button is pressed in the power control menu. So hit the plus button there, and then we'll give the task a name. In this case, I'm gonna call it Studio Lights. Pretty easy to understand. Now I'll go ahead and tap plus to add an action into the Studio Lights task. And then plugin. I'm gonna select plugin. There's a lot of different options here, but plugin's what I need because plugin taps into Hue Essentials, which I'll select next. And up at the very top, I'm going to see that configuration button. This is a configuration of Hue Essentials and the hooks that it's able to get into Tasker. So here I'm going to select switch on because first thing I want to do is turn on these bulbs and choose master bedroom, also known as my podcast studio. Uh, so I'll click save and now in Tasker, I tap the back arrow to go to the main task edit list. That might not be super obvious. And then I'm gonna tap the plus button and down in the filter column, I'm gonna search for wait. And this is gonna give me the option to wait for any number of minutes, seconds, milliseconds. You know, you can, you can use your imagination there. I'm gonna select three seconds. And this is really just to show you that Tasker works in stages. So this is more of a visual representation of it than anything. And I'll hit the back arrow on that. And now let's do that very first process again, hit the plus and add it again. But this time in Hue Essentials, I'm gonna select Activate Scene. And once I choose Master Bedroom, I can then select the scene that I'm looking for below that. And in this case, I use Energize. It actually sets my lights correctly to match my big studio light. Now that that's all done, I'm gonna hit save 
and then back arrow, and then one more back arrow. And here's one of those instances where Tasker is a little bit strange in design. You may think that I'm done, but I actually need to hit that little check mark up at the very top to accept this entry for good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I've set up my task to do the automation the way I want. I can test it by going back into the Studio Lights task, and then down at the bottom, I can tap that little play button. Uh, and when I tap the play button, the task plays in its entirety. It like tests the system. And as you can see, if are the lights in my studio doing what they what I want them to? Yes, they follow the sequence. In most of the ways, I'm there. So now I'm gonna hold down the power button to take me to the power menu. And you can see there next to home, I'll tap the three dots and those three dots open up a couple of options, in this case, add controls. Here are all of the default options. And at the bottom, you can see other apps. It's, it says see other apps. I'm actually gonna tap that. I'm gonna bypass the standard ones that come in the power menu and go to see other apps. And I'm given the option to select Tasker, this new version of Tasker that is seeable within this function on Android 11. Now, once I've done that, I can now see my Studio Lights action that I just created as a control option. I'll go ahead and tap that to select and then hit save. And now, on the power menu, my home block has been replaced with a tasker block. Now don't worry, the home block is still there. You can switch to it by tapping the down arrow next to tasker so I can switch views here between home and tasker. But now's the time to test that tasker button. So we'll get in place, I'll go ahead and tap it, and what do you know, the sequence works. That button triggers the tasker task and the light makes it switch. It, yes, it's super basic. In fact, if I tap this again, the light stays on. I haven't programmed Tasker to do anything with it when it's tapped again. Only set it to turn the lights on, not off if I tap it again. But if I wanted to spend some more quality time with this, I could program that. Tasker is just that powerful. It just takes some time to learn. So there you have it. Uh, took a little bit of wrangling, as is the case when you're using the app Tasker. Tasker is constantly evolving. And like I said, it's been around for years, dare I say almost as long as Android has been around. So it's well known in the Android space. If you wanna customize your device, this is an app that really set the, the stage for how to do this on a really nerdy, in-depth way. A lot of apps have tried to replicate it. Tasker just always is there kind of reigning supreme, but it is a little challenging to use. If you're willing to put in the time to learn and understand the logic and kind of the language and the workflow of Tasker, you can get it to do so many amazing things. So I highly recommend taking a look at that. Now it's highly likely uh, that the developer of Tasker is going to release this new version uh, that we have running on the phone that I showed off today to the Play Store, if, if not soon, uh, soon enough. But for right now, you get it through the direct download. If you want to, you can totally wait for the update to happen through the Play Store and then do this then. Maybe that'll help you feel a little bit more secure in it, totally in your court. I wanted to show what you could do right now because it is kind of cutting edge uh, based on his release uh, to the Reddit thread and offering up the file there. So check it out. Uh, I'm sure much of this walkthrough, regardless when it hits the Play Store, is going to be totally applicable uh, aside from the where you get the, the version of Tasker that's required to do this. So check the Play Store, it'll eventually update there. Uh, send me your questions, your tips, tricks, all that stuff to hoa at twit.tv. You can also hit up our show page at twit.tv slash hoa. There you can subscribe to the show in all podcast uh, podcatchers, anything, you know, any podcatcher that you use that you love. There's a link out from there to so many of them. You can also link out to YouTube if that's where you choose to watch and listen uh, from there. Big thanks to our editor, John Ashley. He always makes these shows uh, actually make sense after the fact. I do appreciate the work that you do, John. And big thanks to you for watching and listening. We'll see you next week on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. 
Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.